Hey everyone, this is Dave, and welcome to our first tutorial video on the basics of using Adobe Illustrator. First off, we'd like to start out by saying thanks to all of you for using our template. We know that many of you, this is your first time using Adobe Illustrator. So I'd like to quickly cover some of the basics uh, mentioned on the toolbar on the left-hand side of the screen, as well as the right-hand side of the screen, how to make basic color swatches, and we'll finish up by editing the passport cover logo colors. I'd also like to apologize in advance if there are some subtle differences between my Illustrator layout and yours. I'm using version CS4 and some of the later versions may look slightly differently but all the toolbars on the right hand side of the screen can be changed by going to your window menu and selecting whichever toolbar and drag and dropping them into place so you can customize the look and feel of your toolbar on the right hand side. With that, we'll go ahead and get started with the tutorial. Okay, first I'd like to talk about the main toolbar, and this is found on the left-hand side of your screen. This toolbar contains all the design tools that Adobe Illustrator offers. And because this template already has most of the design portion done for you, I won't be going into any detail on most of these tools. Now, uh, the ones that you should be familiar with are the Zoom tool, the text tool and the selection tool. With the selection tool a single left click of the mouse will highlight any particular object. Now this can be used to alter the dimensions of the object as well as move that object around. And for finer detail movement I like to recommend using the arrow keys on your keyboard. Double clicking any particular object allows you to edit the field. For complex vector graphics such as the Eagle logo, several double clicks are necessary in order to select individual components of the vector graphic. Okay, now we'll move on to the right toolbar. This is your panels toolbar. Now, as I said earlier, yours might look a little different than mine. I've got mine set up the way I'm just accustomed to using it. If you'd like my suggestions, I like color, gradient, and transparency on the top box. Custom swatches and basic CMYK swatches. Your navigator, which can be used to quickly zoom your font box, paragraph, and open type. These are all used for text editing. And then the layers panel. To get started, the most basic function that you'll want to learn is how to change the color of, of a particular object. This can be done easily by left clicking on the object and selecting a color anywhere on the color wheel. Note this is changing the fill color because the fill color box is highlighted on top. If we want to change the outline color or stroke color, we will need to single click on that box. And the colors can be changed in much the same way. Also note, if we like a more zoomed in color wheel, we can double click and it will bring the traditional color wheel color picker window up. Also with the stroke, I'll make it black so it's easier to see, you can adjust how thick you want that border to add the effect. If you'd like no stroke at all, simply click the white box with the red slash through it and you can see it has completely removed the stroke. If we want the stroke back, but yet we want the inside color to be empty, Now the fill color is completely transparent. Now a better way to actually change colors is by using swatches. 
You might be asking what is a swatch and why do I need it? A swatch is basically just a stored list of colors that you wish to switch to quickly. This is especially ideal for projects such as this that you want to change several different objects to one particular color. Let's go ahead and create a swatch. First I'm going to select the fill color. I'll go ahead and double click and let's pick a color somewhere on the wheel of a purpley pink. Now that we've created that color, we'll want to go to the swatches panel. If you don't have a swatch panel already down here, make sure you click window and that swatches is checked off. Again, it might be located somewhere else. You can always drag it into place wherever you'd like it. Now that we've created that color that we want all of our text to be, simply click and hold, drag and drop it, and now we've created the swatch. Now we can simply change all text and stroke to this color. Highlighting everything and clicking it is even quicker. Now let's move on to changing the color of the complex vector graphic Eagle logo. This can be done in three steps. The first thing you'll want to do is zoom in so it makes it a little bit easier for you to actually select the individual components. I like to do this in the first two steps by double clicking on the brown circle. You'll know you've selected it because the brown color shows up in your fill color box. Now instead of just changing the color of your box or of the, the circle, you can simply go to select same fill in stroke. Now it has just selected everything that has the same fill and stroke which in this case has a brown fill and a transparent stroke. Now that all those are selected a simple click of the pink has now changed almost half the graphic to that new pink color. The next area I'd like to double click on is the box, the brown box. As you can see it took quite a few clicks to finally get the brown on brown fill and stroke box to show up. That's when you know you've selected the right layer. As you can see this particular layer is one, two, three, four, five, six groups in. So it took multiple double clicks to reveal it. Again we're going to go to select, same, fill and stroke, and we'll go ahead and select the pink. Don't forget to also change that stroke color. In this case, the fill and stroke had a brown on both instead of the transparent stroke on the previous. Now we're almost done. You would almost think we were at this point if you didn't notice the little arrow cross hatches in the bottom corner. Again, we're going to double click on just this portion until we see brown show up in the upper right corner. Now that we've clicked on one little pixel that has that, we can do in the same method we did before, select same, fill and stroke, it'll now select all of these and we're all done. We've now changed our front cover to all the same color. That's it for this tutorial. I hope you've learned a lot. Let us know if you have any other questions. We're always here to help and good luck on your design.